I think there's no one thing that makes a great enduro racer. You know, there's so many elements in this sport, so many variables. Every race on the Enduro World Series is its own unique experiment. I feel like that was like our first like really wet Whistler race. A high-speed exercise in managing a hundred independent variables in hopes of positively affecting the one dependent variable that racers really care about, the final standings. There's probably 20 guys here that could be on the podium and they're all pushing as hard as they can. It may be an inexact science, but racing's still the easiest way on two wheels to demonstrate cause and effect. Every section, you're like, I made it, I made it, I made it, I made it. That was insane. I own a slow, don't travel. Waterboard and nothing but smoke. We don't know what's going to happen until it happens. Live in the dream. Back in Disneyland for adults, basically. Whistler is unlike anywhere else. It's always been one of my more favorite races. The mountain biking mecca, it's, it's where everyone dreams to go ride their bike. You know, it takes all the boxes for somewhere you want to come ride and race bikes. A typical EWS race weekend, this is not. Mixed in with classic concerns like equipment selection, physical preparation, and race strategy. Here in Canada, an athlete must also be mindful of overstimulation. Nowhere in the mountain bike universe do the lights shine as bright as they do here at Crankworks. And no race win on the calendar is as prestigious as stop number six in Whistler. Focusing on what you're doing right now, like ripping a corner, pedaling as hard as you can, that's what would get you on the podium, so you kind of need to switch your focus to the here and now, and then uh, the future will look after itself. Whistler was a bit interesting this year. Like, we had our first stage on um, Saturday, and it was the big, you know, top of the world down to the village. The Queen stage here in Whistler is designed to assess the preparation of both man and machine. Queen stage, the biggest, the longest, the hardest, the iconic stage of every venue. You get an extra 40 points if you win that Queen stage. A racetrack that requires a balancing act between technical aggression and perfect pacing. Stage number one here in Whistler is where roots and rock meet uncomfortably high speeds. If you're winning races and winning Queen stages, it's pretty quick that you can build up a huge margin in the overall. Sitting third overall in the championship, I definitely still have a shot at winning this title, and um, every point counts in the in the championship, and you got to fight for them. had as I pace it too much and get to the bottom almost too fresh. At this level, that just doesn't cut it. You know, the guys who are winning that stage are charging everywhere. They're coming out of every corner, sprinting as hard as they can, breaking late into every corner. You need to be almost treating every section of that stage as its own race and try to piece that together into a full run. Probably about six, seven minutes in, got a puncture. Stopped, tried to fix it, but it was beyond repair. And yeah, pretty over having races like this, to be honest. Amongst all the variables within a racer's control, the concept of luck still seemingly exists outside an athlete's sphere of influence. Or does it? While there's active luck, the cliche that fortune favors the bold, Planned luck, where chance favors the prepared mind that uses experience to spot opportunities. And the best luck of all, the deterministic luck, 
four or five corners into the rest of the slippery top of the world, I hear Richie coming like a freight train. The results after you've spent a lifetime building a unique skill set that, not so subtly, tips the odds in your favor. You know, I had some redemption from last year, like last year I flattered on it, so I think that kind of helped like, to really push myself throughout the whole stage one and just really see what I could do. When you ride here, it's pretty clear that this kind of terrain will develop a good bike rider. I think the Canadians get more of that racer mentality. And yeah, it's no surprise. When you spend any kind of time here, you, you would expect some good riders from this area. We're heading down to Squamish and do some riding. I haven't really ridden down in that area much, but I've heard a lot of good things and there's a lot of good riders from the area. So uh, I'm going to check out what it's all about. Nature or nurture? 60 kilometers down the road from Whistler, a not-so-scientific experiment is attempting to solve this catch-22 in a former logging town turned mountain biking mecca. Ready to ride in Squamish? Hell yeah, bro. Good intro. Man, Good this, intro. Is, this is just so natural. <laughs> yeah. it's sick. You know, having my teammates in town with Jesse and ALN, I mean, I get to go train with those guys, and uh, Jesse has always been one of the fastest guys on the EWS, and to be able to ride with him on a regular basis is also amazing, on the best trails in the world. Yeah! Logan! All right, follow me. He's got skills! All right, Greg. We're chilling. Yeah, we're chilling. <laughs> You want my earner? I'm making a lot of money for long runs. Farmer who cultivate daughters and raise sons. The gangster who love the life for ice and big guns. One to L Pop, Biggie and Punk. You want my earner? I'm making a lot of money for long runs. The father who cultivate daughters and raise sons. The gangster who love the life for ice and big guns. One to L Pop, Biggie and Punk. You want my eater? Check the feds of Don Diva. Gucci piping in the SC 432 seater. Remy, are you lost? Okay. <laughs> Just cut off here. <laughs> Good? Yep. Get it. ATF for FEMA starts surrounding the peak. I bought a birdies in the thirties of GPs. I bought a birdies in the thirties. I think it's always cool to spend time with riders outside of racing because you know I haven't spent much time with Remy in the past before and I don't know him super well, but quite interesting to see you know their approach and see the similarities or the differences in how you both go about things. It's quite cool. You don't even see me coming. The conversation is weak. It ain't about There's so much variation for one run. Yeah, like we really covered good. all the bases there. Bit of loam, bit of steep, and then it like mellows out with a bit better corners, and then just like full berm track at the yeah. end. Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> Part of me wonders though, is that like? Regardless of a racer's origins, there remains one element that no athlete truly has any control over: racing's ultimate independent variable, the weather. Real slick in there, and the vision was pretty bad. A lot of fog, a lot of moisture, wild feet out moments, but other than that, I'm sure everyone did. So, all a racer can really do is decide to embrace it. Racing in the wet like that, I really, really enjoy it. It's been a while since we've done that, and it was definitely welcome for me. I'm trying not to think about yesterday, to be honest. I'm just treating every stage as its own race. Just enjoy it, because we got good tracks, good weather for me. In that puncture on Saturday, I damaged my wheel, so I had to run a tube, and tubes suck. So I got another punctures on Sunday. Having a real good stage here. Forget about that stage and just get back up to the next stage and, and try again for another good stage result, and that was, that was all I could do with the day, really. tough to kind of figure out what is happening and is it your bike, is it your fitness, is it your headspace? Those are all big parts of the equation. You know, what am I doing right, what am I doing wrong? Chances are you're not too far away, you could be doing things 95% right and then that last little 5% just needs a tweak. You know, he, he has the pace, he has the team support, he has the talent. I think it's just a matter of kind of figuring it out again on how to put it all together. 
Science and hard-won experience dictate that poor results shouldn't keep occurring to a properly prepared athlete. Eventually, everything reverts to the mean. Well, that was hard, eh? A big fire of sprint in the middle. Sooner or later, exceptional execution should result in exceptional results. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. You know, I knew Sam was pretty close on my heels, so I had to do well, and, you know, just pin it. That worked out pretty well, like I just went fast. What it comes down to is that an athlete can leverage all the science known to man. But sometimes competing at this level also requires a touch of faith. I'm not here to bring home mediocre results. That's not what I want to do. So, you know, I'm always going to push to get the best out of myself on every race weekend. And that's, uh, that's not going to change on the circumstances. Next on On Track. When I first started, if you want a decent paycheck, you need a decent results to sort of back it up. No rider's the same, you know, it's not like, okay, this guy has a few top fives, a couple of podiums and a win. He's worth X because he could have no Instagram followers. 